Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting the like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Let's crack on with today's first story. Much love, guys. And today we're covering an older story which does have a new update to it four years later, by the way. But if you do want to skip parts of the story, as always, timestamps are down in the description and along the timeline below. Thank you. And this story was from Lady Grey 90 who says, My colleague didn't invite me to her wedding and it's completely unraveled our friendship. One of my work colleagues is a lifelong friend of mine. We lived on the same street growing up, went to the same school and when I needed a job after graduating university, she made me aware of an opening at the company she worked at. I applied, got the job and it's been quite a few years since and we still work together. It's a pretty small company and quite male dominated. So after we started working together, we became really close. We take all our lunches together. We regularly stop by each other's desks for a chat and we quickly became known around the office as inseparable. A year ago, she got engaged to a long-term partner. I was ecstatic for her. She had a really tough time a couple of years ago. Two family deaths close together and I did everything I could to be a good friend to her while she was in the worst stages of grieving. She cried with me daily for weeks and I made sure she knew I was always available to listen. I also took about a third of her workload off her voluntarily so she could take days off when she needed to without stressing about her work building up. So now that life has gotten better for her and she's always smiling and excited, it's really nice to see. Ever since she got engaged, as expected, she's talked a lot about wedding plans, especially about lunches. I know basically every detail. When she booked her venue, she was really excited, but she refused to tell me where it was going to be, saying that she wanted it to be a surprise when the invitations came out. The wedding is two weeks away now, and I've long since stopped waiting for my invitation to show up. I know when they were sent because she told me all about delivering them and shows me every day the gifts people have started to buy off their registry. I feel silly for saying it, but the more I think about it, the more hurt I feel that I haven't been included. It's a big wedding and she has invited some other people from work that I didn't know she was even close to. She hasn't even mentioned the reason why I'm not invited and at this point I feel too awkward to ask. I guess it's just a slap in the face because I really thought we were close and now I'm realizing that maybe we're not. The trouble is, since all this, I've started to really examine our friendship and I'm wondering if she even cares about me at all. I can think of a hundred examples of where I helped her work through decisions, listened to her vent, stood up for her when she had issues with colleagues, etc. Even tons of little things like if anyone brings in cake and she's out the office, I always save her a slice so she doesn't miss out. But I can't remember a time that she did anything for me in return. Now when she talks to me, I've realized she doesn't even listen to me. When I'm finished talking, she just carries on with what she was saying before. Almost as if I've never spoken at all. If we're ever talking about me or something I've been doing, she never has anything to say. She just kind of nods and then switches the conversation back to herself. I'm starting to think she couldn't care less about me. She just likes having someone around who she can talk at and whoever that person is doesn't really matter to her. I've invested so many years into this friendship. It's really cut me deep. I feel used. It's also made being at work incredibly lonely because she was my only friend. I stopped having lunch with her and anytime she tries to chat, I politely bring the conversation to a quick end and go back to work. She doesn't appear to even have noticed. I do still wish her well. I'm still glad for her that her life has turned around and she's so happy, but I'm a bit lost. I'm not sure if I'm being too harsh because I'm hurt or if I have even the right to feel hurt in the first place. As I know weddings have a finite number of guests and you have to leave people out that you would invite in an ideal world. But I'm not sure there's any way back from this either. Has anyone had a similar experience? Am I being unreasonable or overdramatic? Should I just let the dust settle and see how I feel then? Edit 1. Just to clarify, things have been asked a lot or requested to be put in an edit. 1. She hand-delivered the invites to other people at work, so I know it hasn't been lost in the post. 2. I haven't asked her about it because I'm a total doormat and scared of difficult conversations. And 3. I invited her to my wedding, but that was years ago, so it's possible she thinks things have changed since then. Edit 2. This has got a lot more attention than I expected. 
for my first ever gold from a kind stranger. Thank you. I've read every single comment. Thank you all so much for taking the time to give me advice. You've given me a lot to think about. Opinion seems to be divided over whether or not I should confront the wedding invitation issue or just let it go. I'm definitely going to make sure that it isn't a mistake. But as for getting an explanation why she didn't invite me, I'm undecided. I'm going to have to think about that and the best way to proceed, but your thoughts have all been really helpful. In terms of our friendship in general, I'm not going to be too hasty to write it off. I'm going to try and put my feelings aside and see if I'm right about it being one-sided. If it is, then I will have learned a good life lesson. And if I see it as worth saving, then I'll have to deal with that the best way I can. It does seem the bigger issue here is my non-confrontational approach to my relationships. Some of your comments were hard to read, but only because I know you're right. And this is something I have to change. I've withdrawn from friendships before because they've hurt me and I felt unable to say anything. And that's not really fair. It's a general problem I have with uncomfortable conversations. Whenever I have to have them, I basically descend into a panic. My mouth goes dry. I shake and I can't find the right words to say. If it's a bad enough problem that I can't ask a good friend a simple question, then I can't ignore it anymore and I need to work on this. Thank you for pointing this out to me as a real problem. I'm going to find a way to get better at it. I will post an update of what happens. Thank you again. And I'll just give you an overview of the comments on this one. A lot of people were just saying, look, you just need to approach her and say, why haven't I got an invite? Or you've delivered all your wedding invitations. No, I didn't get one. Why is that? Et cetera, et cetera. Some people call an OP a doormat. Me personally, I always think the doormat comments are a bit strong. And yes, OP did say that themselves, that they are a doormat. But confrontation isn't easy for everyone. As much as like everyone in the comments likes to say that they would deal with it face on, blah, blah, blah. I don't think it's always the case. I think it's very difficult for some people, even myself. And it is something that some people haven't learned to deal with. Some people are really good at, of course. But others just have never faced these situations in their lives. So it's a learning experience at the same time. But... Opie comes in with her first update five days later and says, So it took me a few days to decide the best way to approach this, but yesterday I had lunch with her again and had the conversation. I started by saying, So you've sent all your invitations out now, haven't you? She looked immediately panicked by my question, and I knew right away that she didn't want me to go down this road. When she said she had sent them all, I asked if that meant she could show me her venue now. She showed me the website of it, including the photo gallery, and talked me through all about where everything was going to happen, all the flowers and decorations she was going to add, etc. It's a nice enough country hotel with some pretty gardens, but I'm not sure what all the secrecy was for. I probed a little more, asking who she invited from work. The list didn't include me. She said that I was looking forward to seeing the photo so I could see how everything looked. She didn't correct me that I would see it on the day. And then I was completely sure that my lack of invitation wasn't an accident. She looked so relieved when I switched the subject and asked if she's excited about her honeymoon and having a rest from all the wedding stress. So, I'm definitely not invited. I thought it over carefully and I've decided not to ask why. For three reasons. The reason is already fairly obvious. She clearly doesn't think we're anything more than colleagues and I've misread the situation. There were some other theories suggested. Example, jealous husband-to-be associating me with her past grief. But considering everything I know about her and our history, I'm sure it's not that. I'm not sure why she didn't call it on the wedding talk with someone she had no intention of inviting. Or even just bring it up with me and explain why I'm not invited. But never mind. Having an awkward relationship at work is the last thing I want. I'm worried that if I push this and turn it into an issue, that I'll look pathetic and needy. Or it will just be unprofessional. They also run the risk of her badmouthing me to colleagues and mutual friends. And I'll find it much easier and less messy to handle my own feelings quietly. This is a once in a lifetime experience for her. And I don't want to be the source of drama that dampens her spirits at all. I'd rather just let her enjoy her wedding, make good memories and not bring her down. And you know, I'm fine with not going. It was never really about getting invited to a wedding. It was more having to face the fact that I'd been naive and taken for granted. And I felt silly that I'd invested way too much in this relationship. That's not all on her because she was never obligated to be my friend. Talking it through on my previous post actually really helped me work through my feelings. When I went back to work on Monday, I felt much calmer and more detached from it emotionally. I've looked back on our whole relationship and honestly, 
He's always been self-involved, entitled, and narcissistic. Being a bride has just made it more obvious, but it's always been there. She's also never given back to me, besides helping me get my job, which of course I'm grateful for, in that she's never been willing to talk me through any problems I've had, and although I help her happily with her work, she says no if I ask her for help in return. She has a few office enemies, and even though I saw her negative traits that caused her to be disliked by some people, I overlooked them and defended her anyway. That I've put a little distance there is quite apparent that she's not a very nice person, and I'm genuinely okay with just moving on. She hasn't really noticed the distance between us so far, or she has noticed and doesn't care slash is relieved that I'm giving her space, so I intend to just continue with doing that. If she eventually asks why, or I get the sense that she's trying to rekindle our friendship, then it will be time to clear the air with how I've been feeling. If she doesn't and we just continue drifting, that's probably for the best. It's sad to lose a friend, and it'll probably take me some time to get over it and to become comfortable with the change in our relationship but I have other genuine friendships and plenty of colleagues who are lovely people who I can get to know better now. The main thing I really took from my original post, and I'm so glad I did post because I needed some tough love on this, is that my fear of confrontation really needs dealing with. If I can learn how to better speak my mind as things are happening, I will stop things from building and building until I have a serious conversation, and it makes what should have been a molehill into a mountain. I also need to figure out how to have difficult conversations without having an anxiety attack, which not only weakens my message but is extremely distressing and puts me off dealing with things and being honest with people. I had a couple of books on assertiveness recommended to me, so I bought them to start me off. I'm also looking into going to a coach, or maybe a couple of therapy sessions at least, to try and better myself. I don't want to hurt other people by doing this, so this has become top priority for me. Thank you so much to everyone who pointed that out to me. I was aware of it, but I didn't think it was a problem. I figured I'd just be that way all my life. Now I know better. Thank you for being so honest with me. Also, thank you to those who taught me through the one-sided friendship issue. I'm a good listener and have always been attracted to people who need to vent. But I only ever noticed the one-off conversations and didn't think I was being taken advantage of as a long-term listening ear. I've been examining my other friendships in the last few days to see if anyone else is using me in the same way, or if I've ever been doing this to others and not had the self-awareness to realize. There are a couple of changes I need to make, including a friendship that I need to set some boundaries in, and another one where I've not been giving back to the other person as much as I should have. I've learned a really valuable lesson from this about maintaining healthy relationships, and I'm very grateful for that. Edit. A few people have been asking about the books I was recommended. Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg. When I Say No, I Feel Guilty by Manuel J. Smith. Why Men Love Bitches by Sherry Argoff. So over four years later, OP comes in with a final update and says, it's been over four years since I posted my original story. I've received occasional messages since asking for an update, but I didn't expect to post one. However, my story was featured in a YouTube video yesterday and I've had a flurry of messages. So let me tell you what has happened since. A colleague and I still work together. In the time that has passed, she has had two kids and took 12 months off for each. So she hasn't actually been around a lot. At first, I avoided her. Looking back, I was being petty and giving her the silent treatment. I was hurt and I wanted to hurt her back. Not my finest hour, but the joke was on me as I don't think she even noticed. But then 2020 happened and we were working from home and she went on maternity leave. By the time we were back together in the same office, it had all been long forgotten. At this point in time, we are friendly. I genuinely hold no grudges, but I understand what our relationship is now. I don't overextend myself, and I don't expect anything more from her than chit-chat. In the meantime, the company has grown a lot, and I have a good group of work friends. We go out for lunch, go to the pub on Fridays, and sometimes hang out on weekends. I've always had some wonderful friends, but now I have a bunch more. And these ones I get to see five days a week. One of the people in this group got married four months ago. Not only was I invited to a wedding, but also a hen bachelorette party. I was on the photographer's list for an official photo with her, along with the other work friends she invited. And after a few drinks, she gave me a big kiss and said she was so pleased I was there. Another one of them is recently engaged, and although her wedding is a while away, I've already been informally invited without having to ask. My colleague has another work friend that she leans on now. 
When things upset her at work, I'm no longer the person she comes to for a rant or a cry. I'm totally fine with that because it was an emotional drain. As for me being a doormat, I've grown a lot as a person since then. For a start, you really do care less as you get older. <laughs> Hitting 30 did wonders for my self-esteem and inner peace. Secondly, I've grown in confidence. I used to be terrified of letting anyone down, so I overcompensated. It took time for me to realize I am actually a really good friend. The more people I meet who like me just as I am, the safer I feel being authentically me. With this growth in confidence, I started using my voice a bit more. Firstly, just with little things. When nothing bad happened, it got easier. I could speak freely without being afraid of losing friends. There's been no major drama, but I believe if there was, I could handle it much better. Some of the messages I've received have been asking for advice, so here's my two cents that I've learned from this whole situation. Healthy friendships have a balance of giving and taking. If you look back over the history of a friendship and the balance is unevenly weighted, you should address that. Can you remember the last time you did something thoughtful for a friend? Or they did something for you? Who normally reaches out first? If you live a distance apart, who makes the effort to travel? Who do you spend the majority of your conversations focused on? Would you call them if you're in trouble? And if you did, do you think they would be there for you? Occasionally evaluating your friendships is good for both of you. You don't want to be a taker, but equally, you don't always want to be the giver, or eventually the friendship will run its course. Having said that, try to be objective and not hyper-focus on it. If your friend is going through a hard time, they're going to need you a lot and probably won't have the emotional capacity to give anything back right now. But what are they like in good times? If bad times hit you, would they step into the giver role for you? That's what counts. Two, not everyone is going to be your bestie. Some friends are casual. Some are just for a reason. Some dip in and out of your life. Don't expect every friend to be the best friend ever because that's simply not possible or practical. And there's a lot to be said for these other kinds of friendships. Some people are great fun on a night out, a good person to kill some time with, or they know how to lift the mood and get everyone laughing. These casual friendships might not have much depth, but they also take very little work and investment. You can enjoy people just as you find them, and when life takes you in different directions, it isn't painful to lose them. 3. Don't give everything of yourself to everyone. Pick wisely who deserves it. Chances are there are only going to be a handful of people in your life who you can trust and love enough to pour your heart and soul into. And when it's chosen carefully, it means even more because they're so special to you. If you're currently grieving the loss of a friend who was never really your friend, I just want to give you a big virtual hug. It's not just painful, but also embarrassing and confusing. It makes you question yourself and all your other friendships too. But time heals and you have true friends just around the corner. Take care of yourselves. I really love when people come back into their posts with updates and they give the advice that, that they've taken on from their previous posts and shown their growth in this post. And you can actually see it in it. The way that they're talking now, you can see growth within there. Some of you will know that I really love the song uh, Sunscreen by Baz Luhrmann, which gives various advice on friends and stuff like that. And it's a great song. If you haven't heard it before, jump on YouTube, have a little listen, Baz Luhrmann, Sunscreen. And it kind of reminded me of that when OP was given their advice there, which I just thought was wonderful. So just a huge well done to you, OP. And I don't mean that in a patronizing way at all, but seeing this growth and, and the way that you and the way things have developed in your new friendships and stuff, it's just absolutely amazing. Huge congrats to you. But now, what do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And we're going to have one more story with an update from Is Mum Cheating, which says, Me, 19 male, my sister, 21 female, found a video of our mum, 45 female. She thinks it's of her cheating, but I think it might not be. We can't agree on what to do with it. My sister found this video on my mum's laptop. I think she was using her laptop for some school stuff and she must have gone snooping through her personal files. She found this video. It's from a few years ago according to the date of the file. It's definitely our mum in the video and it looks to be in some hotel room. There's definitely a man in the video but he's holding the camera and we don't see his face or hear his voice. I don't want to go into any detail but it's basically a strip tease slash sex tape filmed by the man. So while our mum is clearly identifiable, I can't tell exactly who the man is. 
I first got angry at my sister for showing it to me. I told her this is gross. I don't want to see that. She told me she thinks it could mean our mum is cheating on our dad and we should at least present the information to our dad. I told her it's very likely it's him in the photo. You can see the man's hands in a few shots. I think it's my dad. She seems to think it's not him. I told her if we show it to them and it's him, not only will we be embarrassed, but they would get mad at her for snooping. She was like, why do you care? I'm the one who did the snooping, so only I'll get in trouble. I'll cover you if they try to get mad at you. I told her there has to be a more sensitive way of approaching the situation instead of just bombarding our parents with, hey, we saw your sex tape, which could either be with you or mum's secret lover, and we should consider the fallout. However, she seems pretty adamant that she just wants to show them. She thinks it's the safest option since if she was cheating, she gets exposed, but if it was just dad, then no harm done. We can't agree on what to do and have a feeling she might show it to them regardless of what I feel. If I push hard enough, I might convince her of an alternative solution. Any ideas on what we should do? So, Opie comes up with some plans. Option A is sending it anonymously and Opie says I like the idea of sending it to him anonymously, maybe through an email or something. If it's him, no harm done, and he doesn't know it was us. Mrs. Valentine replies saying, please don't do that. Your parents will be shitting themselves wondering what kind of pervert hacker has gone through their computer to watch their private videos. Melek's drama replies that and says, but if it is him and you send it anonymously, they'd be freaking out about who has it and how they found it. Someone says option B, telling dad about the video. He says if it's him, he'll know it's him and won't get mad at us for even looking at it. Is there a way I can let him know that I'm sorry I had to look at it, but it's only because we were concerned about him so he doesn't get mad. Option C, faking finding it in front of dad. Opie says, okay, what if we go up to him and tell him there's something we need to show him on the laptop and, and while browsing it in front of him, we pretend to stumble on the thing for the first time. We can be like, what is this? If he genuinely doesn't know and says open it to find out, it means he doesn't know about it. If he's like, no, don't click that, it means he knows. Jack Dulo's Paradise replies that saying, dude, if you use one of the plans you put in this thread or confront him with it, please post an update. This is gold. I can't wait until your dad A gets an anonymous email with his sex tape and thinks he's being blackmailed. B finds out you've been watching him to do nasty with mum and is crazy embarrassed. Or C, and my favorite option, you pretend to mistakenly find it or showing him something else and the whole family watches mum and dad's sex tape. Cheating women don't keep videos on the family laptop of them stripping and cheating. They're not dudes. And if your mum turns out to be the dumbest cheater ever, then all of this will expose itself soon enough. But she's not, so it won't. And I just want to see the cringe update, so I'm still rooting for C. Opie says, no. Here's what my sister and I decided to do. We're going to sit mum and dad down, tell them both at the same time that while we were using their laptop, we noticed there was a lot of junk and we were cleaning it up to make it run faster. In the process, we accidentally stumbled on this file, mistakenly opened it without knowing what it was, but closed it as soon as we realized. We won't tell them we watched the whole thing and we won't tell them we suspect cheating. We say that the reason we're telling them is because we think they should save the file in a more secure location or maybe a separate hard drive or something so it doesn't get hacked into. If my dad knows about the tape, he'll be like, okay, that makes sense. If he doesn't know about the tape, well, now he would. So Opie did update the post and said, yeah, things didn't go so well, unfortunately. I kept arguing with my sister. I told her if she's so certain they're cheating, the least we could do is ask dad first if he knows about the tape, but not mention that we've seen it. She was determined that it was cheating based on the hands and the feet. She was like, those definitely aren't dads. I told her she was creepy as fuck. If that was them in the video and God knows how many times she's watched it, she was basically watching a video of our mother naked and fucking our dad's dick. Even if it wasn't our dad's dick, it's still fucking gross. She didn't care. I told her if I couldn't stop her, she should at least leave me out of it. I want nothing to do with it. She went nuclear. She went and told them everything and embarrassed the fuck out of herself. Turned out her little detective work was way off. It was dad in the video. My dad was angry, but mostly bewildered, but he just laughed it off and got over it. Our mum, however, didn't take it so well. She had a panic attack. She went nuts. She was like, what the hell is wrong with you kids? I tried to stay out of it, but my sister dragged me into it and named me as her accomplice, even though I had warned her against it. Our mum was so hurt and upset, 
Not only that her daughter would so brazenly accuse her of cheating, but that her children had watched an explicit sex tape of her. She was really traumatized. She couldn't take it anymore. She got up and left to her parents' house where she's been there for the whole day to recuperate. She only called our dad to speak to. She won't speak to us. Our dad told us just to give her time until she's feeling better. And that was OP's last post on that account. <sighs> deary, deary me. What do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. I would. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love. I can smell the smoke from the bacon. Yum, yum, yum. Let's go. See the sun shining from the windows. Yeah, yeah.